what's up everybody and welcome to another episode of News Dose, where we give you all of the latest news in the game industry. And today was a big day for Pokemon fans. After all, Pokemon Direct was today and we got a lot of announcements out of that. We got a surprise announcement for a Mystery Dungeon remake and we also got a bunch of information on Pokemon Sword and Shield DLC, so I will give you the lowdown on all of those, but we also have some more PlayStation 5 news today as well and a really big rumor surrounding Xbox Series X involving Steam. Plus, there is a few more things we're going to talk about including the next Batman game and To the Moon, so stay tuned for all of that. With that said, let's get right into the video. First, I'm going to talk about this PlayStation news and then I'll get into the Xbox rumor here in just a moment. So, as we all know, it's been an interesting week for the PlayStation brand, or more specifically, the PlayStation 5, as we kind of got that weird logo announcement the other day during a live keynote at CES 2020, but things may be starting to take a turn as Jim Ryan gave us a very intriguing statement during an interview with Business Insider Japan, and this is what he had to say. Each time a new console is released, the processor and graphics improve. Those are enticing, of course, but we need to have special appeals as well. We have already confirmed the use of a solid-state drive. Having load times that are next to nothing is a major change. 3D audio and the haptic feedback support of the controller are also things that, when you try them, you will be surprised at how big a change they are. But you know, there are still more unique elements for PlayStation 5 to come that separate it from previous consoles. The bigger differences have yet to be announced. And it really is that last line that is just so interesting, so what exactly could these big differences be? Well, I think if we read between the lines here, Jim Ryan is talking about features not including the graphics as he said those were enticing, but they need to have other special appeals as well. So if we're to just to be looking at features, there is two that immediately pops into my mind. One would be backwards compatibility, and that has been rumored for a long while now to be on PlayStation 5. Several of the rumors have even said that it would be backwards compatible all the way back to the original PlayStation, and as an added bonus, they would be enhanced, so kind of like what Xbox is doing right now and how Xbox 360 and the original Xbox games looks better through backwards compatibility than they did with the original release. That would be a really big deal for PlayStation, but that is just a rumor for now, so there is no guarantee on that, but I do believe it is rather believable. But obviously they would need to figure out how to make the PlayStation 3 games playable on PlayStation 5 because that did use the cell processor which will make things just a little bit more complicated than it should be. It is kind of amusing that that thing is still biting them in the butt all these years later. But who knows, maybe they will get it to work as well. So could that be one of the big differences with the PlayStation 5? Or could he be talking about something else? One other thing that comes to my mind is the DualShock 5 controller, as we have seen a recent patent for their controller that may have back buttons. So maybe that could be a new standard for the DualShock 5 controller going forward. I'd personally really like that. It could be a number of different things though, and I would love to hear your thoughts as to what it could be, so let me know in the comments below. Moving on though, there is a really big Xbox Series X rumor that's going on right now, and I do want to emphasize that rumor part of this because you know, there is no guarantee in this. I don't know if this will be accurate or not, but I wanted to at least talk about it because it really is, I mean, this is very exciting, but I do want you to take this with a large grain of salt for the time being. Anyways though, right now there is a rumor that the Xbox Series X will be able to switch between the Xbox operating system to a Windows mode. This Windows mode doesn't sound like it will be a carbon copy of Windows 10, it's just like some kind of form of it. So not every application will be available on it, but the Xbox does want both Steam and the Epic Game Store to run on it. So what this means is that essentially you could turn your Xbox into a PC to play Steam games or Epic Games, which yes, would be an absolutely huge deal. Not only does PC have a huge library, but it does have a lot of games that are currently not available in the Xbox. As Tiago Costa pointed out to me on Twitter, this could even be a way to get more Japanese games over onto the Xbox. If there is one thing that Xbox really struggles with, 
it's getting Japanese developers to release games on the Xbox platform. But if Steam was available on Xbox, you would suddenly have access to a much larger Japanese library. Though I do wonder what all they would need to do to make this work and if they would need to get Valve involved in this to at least get Steam to work on it. The two do have a really good relationship right now though as Xbox has been putting Xbox games on the Steam platform such as Halo as of recent, but this is a whole different ballgame. Of course we do need to remember that this is just a rumor for the moment and in all likelihood it may never actually happen. I did however find it to be very interesting though so I thought I'd at least talk about it with you and but I will ask this, would you like to see this type of thing happen, or do you think it's even possible at all? Let me know in the comments below. In other news, Pokemon Direct was this morning, and there was a lot of big news there. We talked about this a few days ago, and I was trying to speculate what they could possibly show at this Direct, and one of the things that I did say that could be possible would be Sword and Shield DLC, which we did get. And I'll talk about that here in just a moment, but I never would have predicted this other announcement because we got a remake of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team. That old Game Boy Advance Pokemon spinoff that released in 2006, and I would have never imagined that it would be remade, but here we are 14 years later, and it's coming to the Switch. Luckily, you don't even have to wait too long as it releases on the Switch March 6th, but there is also a demo that you can go play as of this moment, so if you absolutely cannot wait, go check that out. The thing is though, this game looks really good and it seems like they really put a lot of effort into this game. I don't remember a ton about this game, but I remember really enjoying it a lot and I think it's actually one of the best Pokemon spinoffs personally. My absolute favorite is Pokemon Snap, but I will probably pick this game up. Now the other big news coming out of Pokemon Direct was two different DLC expansions for Pokemon Sword and Shield that are coming this year, and this has had more mixed reception than anything. It's not because they look bad or anything, because it actually looks really good, but rather because each expansion does cost $30, and Pokemon fans aren't really used to DLC. And not everybody is happy about it, especially with all the controversy that happened last year. For me, I'm okay with it though, as usually we do get a third Pokemon game for another $60 anyways, so turning this game into a games as a service, is, I mean, I think that's okay personally. But, you know, everybody's gonna have different opinions on this topic, so I, I can respect that. Regardless, the first expansion, Owl of Armor, is coming this June, and the second, Crown Tundra, is coming sometime this fall. These expansions will include a lot as well. It will be bringing back 200 legacy Pokemon, 3 legendary Pokemon, 2 new wild areas, the starters are getting Gigantamax forms, there's new hairstyles, clothes, and more. It actually does sound like they will be coming with a lot of new content, and of course, having more of the legacy Pokemon available is a big deal. Again, I do know not everybody is happy about paying though, and if you don't want to, they are allowing you to access these Pokemon through trades. So it is possible that you can actually trade for some of your favorite Pokemon without actually paying anything at all. One other cool thing that they did show was Pokemon Home, and we kind of already knew about this as well, but it apparently will act as a Pokemon Bank successor. What this means is that you will be able to transfer Pokemon from older games to Pokemon Sword and Shield, and that's a big deal as well, as I do know a lot of people were really upset that this wasn't an option before. Anyways, it does appear to be another really big year for Pokemon, and I'd like to know your opinion about these Sword and Shield expansions. Are you excited for it or not? Let me know. Now this next one may be pretty exciting for you Arkham Batman fans because Warner Brothers Montreal put out another teaser for the next Batman game, which could signify that there may be a possible incoming announcement. Of course speculation is running rampant right now, but if you remember, there was actually a teaser of this game way back in September of last year, and many people really had this same conversation back then where everybody was kind of predicting when will this game be shown? Unfortunately, it just kind of vanished, but here it is yet again, so will they be showing it off this time? And to that idea, when could they possibly show it? There is a few different options if they decide to. 
They could just release a trailer and be done with it, or they could show it at a possible PlayStation 5 event or an Xbox Series X event. Those probably will be the next two big events, so could it be at one of those? I mean, maybe, but then there was something else that got posted on the Warner Brothers Montreal page, and then the tease just got a lot more complicated. Now it appears there may be more to this tease, and it's looking like they're going to really draw this thing out. And because of that, I'm sure you can speculate on what all this means and get some small details about the game, but the announcement may not be as soon as we originally thought. It could be, but it's hard to tell at the moment. Now there is one game related announcement I want to talk about, as To The Moon got a new launch trailer and it will be available on the Nintendo Switch on January 16th, and honestly, I really love this game. While the gameplay is pretty bare bones, there's not really much going on in that aspect, this is one of the best story driven games I've ever played. It may actually be the best, though this is an incredibly emotional game, so if you don't want to cry in public, I will recommend playing this one in private. Either way, I highly recommend this game if you haven't played it already. Anyways though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to hit the bell notification and subscribe button. Peace out.